uh, Russian people. Yeah, this is painful. This is all the stuff. So he's claiming that Zelensky is a, an American proxy. Um, just like it's happening in Gaza and other wars. Well, is Gaza an American proxy, because according to you? This war is not about land. It is about selling weapons so they can murder the working class in the Ukraine, in Russia. Well, the working class in Ukraine are getting murdered by the Russians. And here you are trying to confuse the people, this trying to remove troops from the people's tears, because trying to shill, to shill for your Russophile propaganda. I, I, we've always stood here on this ground. I've stood here. I've stood here. I stood here, here defending freedom. And I stood here I, I defending a better the future. The military uh, you stand here shilling for genocide. You stand here shilling for genocide, Dust. Arms keep peace. You need arms to defend yourself against those who are coming to kill you. That's why Ukraine needs arms to defend itself against Russia. That's what I'm saying. You need arms. Thank you very much. That's exactly the American companies. Oh, here we go. He's winning. Right now. Right now, Ukraine is having some setbacks. I'm not going to lie to you. But that's because the West is not providing what they promised. They promised shells. We didn't get those shells. That's why we had to retreat from Afghanistan. What are you going to do if, if Trump gets in? I think that Europe is starting to invest a lot more money into their military industrial complex so Europe will be able to kind of fill up after Trump uh, you know well, this not inevitably true, messes up escalation. America. I mean the UK is pretty much on the borders is, is preparing for military intervention pretty much yeah. it's doing military exercises all over the world you know so are we basically in World War 3 pretty much no there's not going to be a World War 3 China will ditch Russia in a heartbeat the Chinese are too cunning to get into this situation in a war they, yeah. they they might not win. I just I just had a Chinese takeaway so I know believe me. You think they will intervene on the Russian side? <laughs> no, 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 that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I just had yeah, a go on, go on. So what you say from what you said before would you then so you don't think money has in the in sort of anger these big uh, industrial military conflicts has nothing to do with the war going on in Ukraine. I think money always has a lot to do with any war, any conflict, any situation. No, but that's not what we're arguing about. Money has to do... Listen, 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 listen. He... I, I, I am clarifying. I will clarify it. I will clarify it now. Money has everything to do with this war. Because the Russian regime, the Russian elites, wanted to enrich themselves with this war. That's exactly how money has to do with this. They do not care for the Russian people. No, I'm, I'm answering your question. Yeah, and that's, not, that's specifically not the money I'm talking about. The money I said was that we're talking about the money for arms from the West, from Vanguard, from these places. Do you think that has nothing to do with the stymieing of peace in the Ukraine? Why did the West not support Ukraine immediately? No, it doesn't. The West didn't care about Ukraine in 2014. To say, excuse me, to say, no, no, listen, listen, listen. I'm answering your question. You're the one who keeps trying to interrupt me because you don't like my answer. Now, if you don't like my answer, you can keep going. But if you want to hear my answer, you let me speak, won't you? Thank you very much. I, I am answering your question right now. Look, money, money all, always. Uh, here's a fist bump for you. Uh, <laughs> money always, money always has a lot to do with every single war. Nobody's acting as if money has nothing to do with this. But the thing is, the thing is that claims like that of dust here, or of dusty brain, who claims that oh, you know, it was the evil West who started this war, who who wanted to earn money. With I, I know. I'm, it's the point about money and about the West. It's the same point. They do have to do with it, but not because of the reasons he was saying. No, no, wait, wait. I need to answer this question. Look, the the, point, the thing is. Huh? No. Dude, you're really not understanding my point at all. Listen, listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. This war started all the way back in 2014. If this idea that, oh, you know, they want to earn some money, if this was legit, they would immediately start supporting Ukraine full throttle to earn some money, right? But they didn't do it. They did not care. No. 
they did not care. They thought that Russia, oh, you know, Russia will keep Crimea, they'll keep Donbass, there, there will be a peace, right? But they were wrong, they were stupid. They were stupid. The West has grown weak from generations of not knowing what war is. And now that Russia is, now that Russia is bringing war to Europe, they don't know what to do. Now, now they're stuck. This is why I'm saying yes, yes, it does have something to do with money, because now, now they're starting to invest in the military industrial complex now. But now it's a bit late, man. It's not too late yet, but it's later than it should have been. It was negligible amounts. It was nothing. Oh, come on, man. You can't be serious. In 2014, when, when the war began, when the war began, the Ukrainians would get a few batches of javelins, a few batches of artillery. That is nothing. Oh, man. Come on. Come on. You can't be serious here. You can't be serious. That is nothing. Absolutely negligible. Absolutely negligible. No, somebody pushed war. Putin pushed war. Putin pushed war for sure. The people that wanted to sell all those arms were like, they didn't, they didn't give a shit. They didn't give a shit. Hello, sir. Sir, what is your solution? What is your solution? What can you offer? For what you were talking about. That's a good question, actually. What have you been talking about? We were talking about, uh, first he said that the the profit of weapons and the pushing of... The weapons are made. You asked me what we're talking about. No, you've gone to the beginning, the end. Go to the end. All right, tell it to me. Originally, this gentleman said that he didn't think that the, the sale of weapons Weapons and the pushing of war had anything to do with the beginning of the Ukraine-Russian conflict. It was purely to do with Russia. And there was no incentives, that's what you said, there was no incentives at the beginning of the war for these people that sell weapons to help push that idea. I disagree. Alright, now you both time to think what you're going to say. Say it. What is your solution? What you just said? For the war. To the war? I don't know. I can explain but you okay. <laughs> anyway, anyway, there, there is there is a simple solution. Is it a bad thing or is it well, is it not a good business? It is at the moment. You know, there's actually a very simple solution to this war. It's to give Ukraine what Ukraine needs to win. It's as simple as that. The Ukrainians have been speaking about this for a long time. This war could have been over years ago but no of course not there was a there were, there were appeasement tactics there was the idea of oh no we can't escalate against Russia well now Russia has escalated against us against the whole West and Russia continues to escalate as many times as they want so they need to be beaten in Ukraine at long last that is the solution to this war because they will betray every single bit of every single agreement that is made with them as they've done in the past I will give you guys a very specific example of Russia betraying their agreement. The second Minsk agreement. Now the first one was betrayed by Russia, but it's a bit more debated. It can be debated about. The second one, there is no possible debate, because before the second Minsk agreement was signed, a while before, the Ukrainians and the Russians were engaged in a very vicious battle near the Baltic, a place called the Baltic. Now, when the Minsk agreement was signed, the second one that is, when it was signed, the Ukrainians Ukrainians have stopped fighting. They expected the Russians to do the same. Now, what did the Russians do? A few hours after the second Minsk agreement was signed, the Russians went on a full offensive and they surrounded the Baltic because the Ukrainians were getting ready for peace at that point. And what happened after that? Well, a few days after, they won the battle. It was the biggest Ukrainian defeat. And all because of what? Because the Russians signed the treaty and they broke that treaty a few hours after they signed it. And this is what the Russians do on a regular basis. They sign treaties, they break them for their immediate gain. We cannot sign treaties with Russia. We cannot try to have this fox peace with Russia. It's too late, even if it's signing treaties. It is too late, yes. I agree. It is too late. 
Anyway, my friends, we are fighting to answer any questions, but we need to keep in mind one specific thing. That these questions sometimes have easy answers, sometimes they have complicated answers. Now, we, we need to talk about these things openly, I feel like. You know, uh, well, what about you ladies? Did you, have a, did you hear some interesting points from the... I'm sure you did. I know some of these guys. I know some of them. I know some of these people. Uh, I know them very well. I've heard these points of, oh, you know, but you pray, it needs to give up, man, it needs to give up, then there will be peace. Yeah, sure. Yikes, 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 yikes. That is, that, the oh, hope. Yes, you know, Russia, Russia is the pinnacle, certainly Russia is the pinnacle of advancements, isn't it? You know, that's why everybody tries to leave Russia. It's because they're so advanced. It's because they're so great. It's what always happens, right, guys? People try to leave good countries and get into the crappy countries. Isn't that right? It just blows my mind on so many levels, man. It, 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 it's just very funny stuff. But I think it's still important for us to be engaging in these conversations because it's, uh, you know, it's what freedom of speech is. And I think we should cherish freedom of speech while we have it. Because then if we live in a country like Russia, like Iran, like North Korea, well, then we can't have this conversation at all. Because at that point, you will either have the opinion of someone like Dust over there, uh, who was here a while ago, who will always shield for the country. Oh, there he is. There's Dust. There's Dust. Yeah. Yes, Dust. Let's have a little debate, uh, both of us on our no, stand here. Never mind. Go on. Of course, I can feel at least one of those questions coming. Uh, it's always the same question. It's always the same question. So you know what? Alright, let's, uh, guys, let's. Uh, in the chat, uh, get me something new or new question. Jenkins. Why is Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. My absolute favorite. You know, you know, guys. Maybe one day I'll do a little stream with a drinking game attached. That every time I get asked, oh, why are you not in Ukraine fighting? You know, you take a sip. You take a sip. Now I'll answer the same thing I've always answered. I think these individuals should watch the previous videos of. Street Mike, you know, big up, subscribe to the channel and watch the other the other videos where he asked me this channel, this uh, sorry, this question before. Now, my friends, my point, my purpose is to make sure Ukraine gets the weapons it needs, that Ukraine gets the support it needs. Without those weapons, without that support, even if every single man, woman, and child goes to Ukraine and fights against the Russians, we will lose. We can't win without that support guys. We're not the Russian military to send people as cannon fodder with a brick in their hand. You know, like the Wagner group was doing, uh, the Wagner group we discussed a while ago, right? We don't do that. We need those weapons. We need support. And keep this in mind. Every Ukrainian life saved now is a life of a Westerner saved in the future. Because now this war is in Ukraine. Now the destruction is in Ukraine. It's localized. But in the future, if Russia wins against Ukraine, if Russia takes takes over Ukraine, becomes more powerful with the resources of the Ukrainians. Well, my friends, then you will have to fight yourself. So at that point, it's not going to be why is Pavlov not fighting. At that point, it's going to be why are you not fighting. At that point, it's going to be like that. Oh, hold on, it's real, man. I remember you, man. Big up, big up. Love this guy. The next question is from the Blunt. The Blunt. Okay, okay. Blunt Please tell us about the Holodomor. Okay, I, I love this. You know, Blood Crusader, big up. This is a very important thing to ask. The Holodomor was a mass extermination of the Ukrainian people by the Soviet Union during Stalin's rule. Right before World War II, millions of Ukrainians were exterminated. And Ukraine, keep in mind, keep this in mind, Ukraine has the best soil in the world. Ukraine, breadbasket of Europe, thank you very much, absolutely. Ukraine has the best soil in the world. It's called Chernozem, it's like black earth, it's really fertile land. Ukraine has the biggest percentage of this black soil in their lands. It's very fertile. Ukraine is the breadbasket of Europe, as mentioned. How would Ukraine get a famine? I'll tell you how. Because the Soviet scumbags came to Ukraine and they removed all of the food from the Ukrainian villages and cities and simply made those people starve to death. It was one of the biggest atrocities in human history. You know what I mean? It was on the level of the Holocaust. 
terms, in terms of the amount of people it killed, in terms of the damage it has done. And you know, it, I condemn, I condemn the potato famine. I condemn the potato famine. It's true. I mean, it was a smaller scale, but Ireland is a smaller country. So yeah, I condemn, I condemn what happened back then. I think it's uh, regrettable. It's very bad. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm not, not going to ignore it. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's cool. I uh, appreciate the the, the mention. Right, I'm going to be honest. I'm asking questions online. It's okay. Later, later, bro. Later. I've got lots of questions. Another one has said Lisa Sargent. Lisa Sargent. Okay. Very military name here. Oh, you a Pilates instructor? As you are pulling the flag. My what instructor? I'm a Pilates instructor. Uh, yes, yes, guys. This is this is. Uh, uh, this nah, man. I, w I won't do Pilates on this. This is this is too good to do Pilates on top of this. We'll get uh, we'll get a Soviet flag. We'll do Pilates on top of the Soviet flag. Actually, no, that that wouldn't look good. That wouldn't look good either. How long has this this is my boy Pablo? How long have you been a sleeper cell? Nationalized. Oh. Look at that, Not look at that. We got and another one. Oh, thank you. Genocide. Are you borrowing it to me or is this a gift? To make money. Nice, look at that. Hold on. Let me let me put this one in my pocket and I'll, I'll uh, No, uh, hold this, hold this for a second. How long uh, I'll, I'll keep answering the question as I'm putting this on. How long have I been a sleeper cell? Now my friends. Um, I love sleeping. I always dream when I'm sleeping. But in real life, I'm not a sleeper agent. Although it would be very interesting to be one, you know, I sometimes dream about being James Bond or something like that, like a sleeper agent, like a, some kind of a spy or something. But I'll be honest with you, my friends, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, uh, agent. I'm not the stuff agents are made of. Uh, I'm a bit, yeah, I'm a bit, I'm a bit um, too direct to be a sleeper agent. I'd say. I don't know if that answers your question. Sorry, but uh, hold on. And before before we continue, let me just. Uh, mention a really quick story I have. This is a very funny story before one of our rallies. So this guy comes to me before one of our rallies at 10 Downing Street. He comes near me and like he goes to shake my hand, I shake his hand and he grabs my finger like this. He says, this is Ukraine. It's weak. This is the US. It's weak. This is Russia. It's strong. You can't beat Russia. Russia is too strong for you. And I just started laughing at him. I was like, what the hell is this guy all about? And he didn't like me laughing at him. He was like, oh, oh, oh what's going on? And he asked me, where are you from? And I, I was wearing like a blue t-shirt with a yellow trident. So obviously I'm Ukrainian, right? The most Ukrainian thing you can, be, you can be wearing. I say, I'm Ukrainian. And he's like, no, you're not. You're from America. You have an American accent. You're a CIA agent. That's my answer to this question. The next question is funny. In what side would you be on? In World War II. The British side. Easy answer. Russian Empire. Dibble and Sith. Have you ever seen him fight? In assault about the hell. In an assault mine. <laughs> no, but I have been in places with very salty people. You know, when I was doing uh, a little um, interview with some Z Russians near the Russian embassy. You know, actually, most of the Russians there were against Putin. Most of them went to vote against Putin. That's right. But there were those few chosen, you know, mentally uh, gifted people, especially mentally gifted, you know, quote unquote, who went to vote for Putin. And they were very salty because they were seeing all of these anti Putin Russians and they were seeing me with this flag. This is this is like a red flag for them. It's like a bull seeing red. So no, I guess that counts as a salt mine to an extent. Do you have a dog? No, I don't. Because someone has asked where is Pavlo's dog? Oh, this is a reference to uh, Ivan Pavlov, the Russian scientist who did the, uh, the experiment to calculate uh, the dog's saliva. I'm sure people can research it. I don't need to explain it all. But uh, that's that's where my alias comes from, Pavlov. Mike Pepper has said, whilst your countrymen are being linked 
Lawrence. Oh, here we go. And you're standing on a soapbox. Here we go. How does it feel to be a coward? Here we go, here we go. I mean, this is basically the same exact thing that was uh, asked a while ago. It's just that this one is a little bit more rude. <laughs> so, first of all, uh, this is not a soapbox. This is a little stand I'm standing on here. First things first, right? Secondly of all, many Ukrainian politicians and activists have said that the Ukrainians abroad need to become the lobbyists for the Ukrainian cause. They need to show people what's going on. Because without foreign support, Ukraine can't win against, can't win against, 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 excuse me, against Russia. You know what I mean? So that's something every Ukrainian should be doing. I, I don't know why any Ukrainian should be feeling bad for standing up to the Ukrainian cause anywhere around the world. And as I said before, as for the rest, why I'm not there, I've already answered this question before. Please look up the answer I gave before. I'm not gonna, I mean, I don't really want to keep repeating the same exact thing. It's a bit boring. Absolutely, let's move. 100%. A discussion this week about the possibility of that nutcase in Russia. Because you need him more. Which one of them? Deploying a tactical nuclear weapon. We've also heard about the possibility of a strategic nuclear weapon being let off. What are your own personal views on a nuclear weapon being brought in to the Trump? This is a very important question. Um, and uh, I will need some time to go through all the different things that need to be spoken about. So, I, Because I think there's a big misconception about the use of nuclear weapons by Russia. I believe, and I can prove this with evidence, that Russia, um, you know, that, that there are two situations in which the use of nuclear weapons is possible. The first option is uh, a direct invasion of Russia proper, I don't mean the Russia annexed uh, regions of Ukraine, I mean proper Russia, pre-2014 Russia, by the West. That's the first option. And I'm sure everybody, even the Russophiles, and the, uh, who, 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 who some of them might be seeing this, 